Hi everyone! Today is Sunday, October 5th. Welcome to episode 18 of Knits and Stuff. My name is Alicia and today we'll be talking about finished objects, works in progress, pretty things, local delights, and wibbly wobbly timey wimey. Um, first, before we get started, um, to those of you that are new, welcome. And those of you that are returning, thanks for coming back. Um, if you haven't already, there's a group on Ravelry that you can join. Um, it's called the Knits and Stuff Podcast, and I will link to it in the show notes, which are at knitsandstuff.wordpress.com. So, yeah, let's get started. Um, I have finished objects, yay! Uh, the first thing I finished is some spinning. And I can't remember if I talked about this in my works in progress or if I upgraded it to finish objects last week or two weeks ago. But um, I finished the Pigeon Roof Studios Merino Nylon um, blend and plied it. So it is a two ply, um, hopefully fingering weight. I haven't washed it yet. Um, it might be a light fingering. But yeah, that's what it looks like. I'm excited. Hopefully this will make a nice pair of hand spun socks. Um, yeah, so this just needs to get a bath and then it will be ready to knit into socks. Um, and my second finished object is some sewing. So that's exciting. I don't know what I'm doing. I'm trying to twist this back together. <laughs> um, so I finished um, the... Remember that skirt that I talked about in episode 6, I think? Um, where I got some fabric from um, a verb for keeping warm and I was going to make a skirt out of it, but I wasn't sure which one and then I was like, maybe I'll make the zinnia skirt. So that's what I did, and I finally, finally sewed it um, this weekend, and it's right here. Yay! It's a skirt! Um, so I made version two of the pattern. There's three versions. One has buttons down the front and um, pockets that are on top of the fabric, um, or on top of the skirt. And the second version is um, is just a regular pleated skirt. Oh, the first version is also gathered. The second and third versions are pleated. Um, the second version has pockets. The third version is lined. And I think the third version is also supposed to be longer, like a midi length. But I made... And then the second version is supposed to be knee length. But I made this one the longer version. So it's like roughly 60 inches. Um, and it kind of, this took a really long time. Um, it has pleats and I can do, show you that close up. Um, the pleats not only get sewn um, on the wrong side, but they also get um, top stitched over on the right side. So that took a while. And then it also has a little button in the back. Um, and as you can see, my zipper is a little bit too short. Um, I should have put it up higher, but I didn't. Um, but that's okay. I was thinking I might make a bow out of the fabric and then have the bow in the back. Um, like with the ties on the bottom. Or, you know, like the ends of the bow covering that so you wouldn't really see it. Um, and let's see, I didn't really make any other changes than combining the two... Um, let me focus. <laughs> um, I didn't really, yeah, I didn't really make any other changes. Um, the waistband in the pattern, so I chose one size of the pattern and after measuring myself, and when I did my um, muslin, they, it was like way too big. For, so, um, so I, but then I wanted to keep it anyway just in case I wasn't, um, doing my seam allowances correctly so I did the f same size for the final skirt and um, and it was still too big but um, I just took it in on the sides a little bit where the pockets are oh this has pockets 
like regular pockets, which I'm excited about because pockets are the best. Um, so I took it in a little bit on the side um, after or before putting the waistband on. And um, I also accidentally, you have to iron the pleats a certain way. And when I was sewing the waistband on, I accidentally flipped some of the pleats the wrong way. So, um, yeah, that happened, and, um, yeah, and other than that, I mean, the pattern was nice, um, pretty easy to follow. I think it's supposed to be a beginner's pattern, um, but there were some, uh, sorry, the doorbell's ringing, um, <laughs> there were some, um, like, specifics that they didn't, um, that I wouldn't have thought of. Um, like, they didn't have, um, the seam allowances on all of them for how, how big they should be, and, um, so some, I was just assuming that they would be either a quarter of an inch or three-eighths of an inch, um, yeah. Oh, and, and, um, so I finished the edges of all of the, the raw fabric, and I don't have a serger, but my sewing machine has... Um, like a, like a, um, fake overcast stitch and, uh, a f presser foot for it. So that was exciting. Um, and so I was like, oh, who needs a serger? I can just do this. But it took a really long time. Um, yeah. So, yeah, that's, that's my skirt. And I think that was pretty much, pretty much it. Yeah, it's exciting. So I just finished this yesterday. And I had a button already, too. Um, I didn't have to go buy this. And it matches. Isn't that exciting? Um, yeah, so that's, that's my finished object. Um, which brings us to works in progress. So I haven't done any knitting the past couple weeks. Um, but I do have some spinning to show that I just started. Um, I, so we went to the Dixon Lambtown Festival. Um, in Dixon, which is the town just south of Davis, where UC Davis is, um, and it's just north of the Vacaville, of Vacaville, where the Vacaville outlets are, um, in case that means anything. <laughs> so, um, I bought some, I'll show more of the other stuff I bought later, but, um, I bought, one of the things that I bought from, um, Carolina Homespun, they had a booth at um, Lambtown, and I got, um, Crosspact Creations, um, Signature Blend Stone Soup, which I guess is, I've never heard of her before, um, but, uh, she, after reading some of this, <laughs> um, she uses, Stone Soup is just the, um, to kind of use up the leftovers of her blends, so, um, I got uh, the Patchwork and Pinafore's colorway. I think that's the colorway name. I think so. <laughs> and it looks like... Oh, printing. Sorry. It looks like this. And I got... It says I have at least four ounces of it. Um, so that's what it looks like in the roving. And then I tore some of the strips up and put them into this basket that I bought also. Um, this is just going to be a combined pretty things and um, and spinning works in progress. So, um, but this basket is from um, Woven Market and it's the ones that um, they're handmade in Ghana and then um, they work with um, the women there to bring them out here and sell them at various places. So that's the basket. Um, yeah, and then on my spinning wheel, let's see if I can bring it over without hitting, knocking over anything. So there is, oh, there is my bobbin of singles. Um, I just started this yesterday because I just bought it yesterday <laughs> and I got really excited. I really like the colors, the white and then the like confetti sprinkling. Um, oh, it's also uh, mostly um, wool and 
Tessa silk and some silk noils. So um, the wool is just blends of her sheep, various um, of various breeds, and then there's the color um, silk noils and Tessa silk. So so far it's been pretty nice to spin. Um, <clears throat> Some of it has been kind of not as easy to draft because of the the silk, um, but yeah, it's, I'm, I like it a lot. It's really pretty. So that is works in progress. Um, yeah, that's all I have. That's, I, yeah, I need to to knit more. Um, I've still been playing Destiny a lot, <laughs> so <laughs> that's probably why. But um, yeah, so pretty things. Um, is my camera? Well, we'll keep it focused like that because I'm going to show off more pretty things. Um, so I also bought at uh, Lamb Town um, some sock yarn, more sock yarn, um, from Fishnets. And I got her self-striping strong sock in the long stocking colorway. Um, her strong sock is 2 ply, 80% um, superwash merino, and 20% nylon. And look at those colors, they're so bright! Oh my gosh! Um, and the striping isn't, um, I think they're uneven stripes, so yeah, that's exciting. Um, and I'll show her, her bag got, um, also came with a little business card and a little pin. So, yeah. So that's that. So I also got um, two braids from Greenwood Fiber Works, and this is her bag. Um, so I was just walking by her booth, and I felt um, the braids that were hanging on the side, and they were really soft. And I was like, "Oh, I think I have to get one of these." Um, so this is. Her um, hand painted roving in 50% um, yak and 50% silk. And it's in the colorway Hawaii. Um, and I think it's a little bit, oh, I'm getting washed out. <laughs> it's a little bit darker than what's showing up because it's kind of bright right now. Um, what if I bring it back here? That's that a little better. That's a little better. <laughs> and, and then I also got. Um, uh, roving, glitter roving in just the natural colorway, and this one is um, 84% superwash merino and 16% um, nylon, or not nylon, um, <laughs> thinking about socks still, 16% um, Selena. So this one, she had a gold one and a silver one, and I got the gold one, so I don't know how, can you see that? Yeah, there's a sparkle. <laughs> So, um, yeah, that's all I got from there, and I think that's all of the pretty things, yeah, because I talked about, um, the cross patch creations and the basket, so, yeah, that's all of pretty things, which, um, means now it's time for Local Delights, um, which is kind of related to pretty things, because I'm just going to talk about, um, Dixon Lambtown for a little bit. So, um, we went up to Dixon yesterday and they have, um, a fairgrounds there and they, um, had basically, um, some booths in either side, in two different buildings. They had some booths outside and they had a whole spinning area outside, which I think were um, different spinning groups, just brought their wheels and sat and spun, which was kind of cool. Um, and then uh, they had um, a bunch of rides for, well, a bunch of like, um, kind of like county fairgrounds or county fair rides um, and activities for kids, mostly kids, um, like rock climbing and a big inflatable Titanic ship. Um, <laughs> And, um, yeah, and then some food, which we didn't try any of the food, because we actually didn't stay that long, because it was, um, pretty small. The, um, it's definitely not, well, so it's kind of like the Monterey County Fair, but it's, um, definitely more fiber-focused, because they had a bunch of fiber booths and vendors. Um, 
and we did get to see some um, live livestock. <laughs> um, so there were there were three alpaca that were next to one of the booths, and then there were two goats um, on another area. And we didn't get to see. There were supposed to be um, a sheep herding competition. Um, and that was supposed to be both days, I think, but it, it started at 9, and we didn't get there until, like, 11-ish, 11.30, maybe. <laughs> um, and, and then they also, um, today, have a sheep show competition, so we didn't get to see that either. So we didn't see as much um, livestock as I was hoping to see, but um, it was still, like, a good trip out there. Um, they had a bunch of vendors that I don't think I normally see, although I have seen um, a couple of them at some of the other like craft county local craft fairs. So um, yeah, I liked it. It was nice. It was nice and small, not too crowded. Um, there was also a raffle, which we didn't stay long enough to hear about, so I don't know if we won anything. <laughs> I don't know what they were raffling off either. But um, yeah, that was... Dixon Lamp Town. So it was, yeah, it was nice and low key. So if you're looking for something like that, you should go next year. Um, definitely bought, had a lot of opportunities to buy stuff. So um, yeah, that is Local Delights. So that brings us to Wibbly Wobbly Timey Wimey. Um, so two episodes have passed, and actually there was one yesterday too, but I haven't watched it yet. So um, and I think this yesterday's episode was the last until the Christmas special. Um, do I need to? I think I need to refocus my camera. Sorry, I've been like blurry the whole time. Mm -hmm. Which way am I going? This way. Okay. <laughs> uh, maybe we'll just cut that part out. <laughs> so, um, yeah, it's really, by the way, it's really warm here um, this, this past week. I think it started warming up like on Wednesday and then now yesterday was the warmest it was like 97 in Dixon supposedly um and it's still like really warm it's like in the 80s in Berkeley which is almost unheard of um which is why I keep moving my hair back and forth because it's it's hot so um anyway when we only time why me Doctor Who um yeah last episode until the Christmas special and I'm gonna start talking about the other episodes episode five and six so I'll put up a little spoilers thing if you don't want to hear about them um, I'm not gonna talk about them for too long because it's been a while since I've seen them um, but yeah so spoilers <laughs> so episode five was three weeks ago and it's called time heist and um, they had to, Clara and the doctor had to, um, go rob a bank <laughs> and with two other people that got sucked into it, um, and they didn't know who was directing them how to do it or directing them to do it, and they had these little, these cool little worms that made you forget a certain part, period of time so you lost certain memories, which is why they ended up in this room getting ready to rob a bank and they didn't know how they got there. Um, which they needed to do because the, um, the security at the bank um, relied on guilt to find people and could like sense guilt and could kind of read your thoughts. So they needed to clear their thoughts so they wouldn't get caught or would try not to get caught. Um, so yeah, it was, I liked this episode, um, maybe not my favorite episode of the new season, but it was still pretty good. Um, I liked the extra characters that they brought in. Um, one was like half human, half droid-ish kind of. I think it sounded like he was, had like computer hardware integrated with himself. Um, and he could delete memories and stuff which was kind of cool. Um, not something that you'd probably want to do, but just <laughs> the fact that you could do it was kind of interesting. Um, and then the other character that they had was um, a girl who could take the form of anyone that she touched. Um, so yeah, they both had um, things that were in the bank that they wanted so that they could 
um, that kind of went with their abilities, abilities. Um, and then uh, the doctor and Clara, I think, had something that they wanted in the bank too. Yeah, which is why they were robbing the bank. Um, so they all had reasons and they all had skills that they um, brought to help them rob this bank. And um, yeah, it was a good story. I liked the direction that they went with it and, and the kind of plot twist that you could kind of see coming, but um, but you can only see part of it coming, I guess. <laughs> and the fact that the doctor was the one that was telling them to rob a bank. Um, but then the reason that they were robbing the bank was because of the um, the lady in charge of the bank regretted her life decisions and wanted to um, remedy at least one of them. So it was sweet, the ending. Um, and then, oh, and they also had um, Missy from before, which they haven't um, showed her recently in the past few episodes. So they had her again. Um, wait. Was it in this one? No, you know, it wasn't in this one. It was in the next one. So, so episode six, um, The Caretaker. That um, was last week's episode. And I think I like Time Heist better than The Caretaker. Um, at least I like the plot better. The plot was like, was kind of secondary here. I think this episode was more about introducing the doctor to Danny. Um, and he's mean to him in this episode um so the doctor has been the new doctor has been kind of mean in general but in a kind of bearable way I think personally um but in this episode he kept insisting that because Danny was a soldier he should be a PE teacher and it was kind of awkward to sit there and hear him say that he like refused to accept him as a math teacher so that was, yeah, kind of uncomfortable. <laughs> um, but yeah, I think that's why this episode wasn't as enjoyable as the other one. Um, but yeah, so basically the doctor um, comes to Clara's school where Clara and Danny are teaching and he needs to go undercover by um, wearing a different coat and he becomes the caretaker for the school because there's an alien that is going to come to that school and um, destroy things and uh, so the doctor has to save everyone and um, it's interesting um, yeah like I said the plot was secondary um, in this episode but um, it was kind of funny because the doctor um, didn't know exactly or maybe chose not to accept that Danny was um, Clara's boyfriend and she thought or he thought for a little bit that Clara was dating the teacher that looked like Matt Smith which was pretty funny because um, he got really excited about it and he's like oh you're dating the old me essentially or someone that looks like the old me um, and then he found out that it was actually Danny and then he was kind of upset about it. So, um, yeah, uh, yeah, so it was, it was okay episode, um, and Danny got involved and met the doctor and now knows about space and time, um, so we'll see where that goes in this week's episode because they didn't really show him reacting too much about it. Um, he did get to wear an invisibility watch though. Uh, which the doctor had brought so he could go defeat the alien guy um, and he helped defeat the Danny helped defeat the alien so yeah that was this, this week's or last week's episode it was fine um, but yeah what let me know what you guys thought if you want um, uh, yeah uh, that's that's pretty much it um, yeah so no more spoilers are done wibbly wobbly tommy mommy is over um, so yeah, that's pretty much it for for this this episode. Um, social media stuff. I'm Eliana Nitz on Ravelry and Unperfect529 on Twitter and Instagram. Um, and there's a group on Ravelry if you care to join. Um, and everything's in the show notes, which are at nitsandstuff.wordpress.com. And yeah, 
that is pretty much it. So um, thanks for watching and I think I will see you guys in two weeks. So yeah. Okay, bye.